Some are fundamentals. I think God wants thinkers. God calls us to love him with our minds. Now, I know sometimes people take this to the extreme. Like back in the 70s and 80s, especially like Pentecostal churches, for example, they were tired of being holy rollers, so they swung the pendulum way over the other way and become really, quote, intellectual. I'm not suggesting we swing the pendulum. I'm just saying we need to have it in the middle. We need to be led by the Spirit and use our brain. Say amen, yeah. yeah. We need to be led by the Spirit and use our brain. Yeah. We're to love God with our mind. And so today we want to talk about wanted theologians. God wants theologians. Do you know what a theologian is? Anybody know what a theologian? Literally, do you know what a theologian is? It means one who studies God. Theos, Greek, theos. Greek means God. Uh, anyone that's a logian, <laughs> that's a, that just means a study of. So theology is a study of God. So God is looking for people that study him. And you know who that is? That's you. If you go to church, if you go to church that believes the Bible is the word of God, you're a theologian. In fact, you may be the only theologian that your friends know. Back in the day, we used to use a phrase that uh, you may be the only Bible people read. You remember that phrase we used to use? Remember that back in the day? You, may be, you literally may be the only Bible people read. You are a theologian, so you can't go, oh, I'm going to leave that to the smart people. Guess what? If you're not one of the smart people, get smart. That was a great show. That was actually my favorite show. You, see, you got me off on it, Andy. You know you can do that. <laughs> my favorite show. Where's Steve? Steve Straza put up on uh, Facebook uh, this morning about what, what was your favorite serial in the, the show you'd watch on Saturday mornings. Well, Get Smart was on Saturday mornings. But every day after school, 4.30, Get Smart. Anybody? Maxwell Smart, Get Smart. Anybody? Anybody? Uh, that was the best. The best. The best. Chief Hello, Chief. Yeah, here this year. Chief Hello, Chief. Yeah, that's it. So God wants theologians. God wants you smart. You don't get to say that for somebody else. God's looking to us to get his word inside of us so people can, when they, people ask us questions, which they will, if we serve like that, or if we step out like Rebecca just talked about, people are going to ask us questions, and they lead people directly to Jesus if we're ready. Yep. How many want to be ready for that? Yeah. We should be ready for that, so that's awesome. Theologian. I've used this phrase a lot, but I wanted to use it again in this context. A.W. Tozer said the most important thing about you is what you think about when you think about God. The most important thing about you is what you think about when you think about God. And, and last week we took a, a survey. We took the same survey that was done, uh, in case you're visiting, you weren't here last week. We took the same survey that was done last year. Uh, the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada put it out. It was called the Biblical uh, something survey, literacy survey or something. And we, we learned that, last week we learned that 67% of Canadians say they're Christians, but only 11% read the Bible uh, at least once a month. Did you hear that? 67 say they're Christians, only 11% say they read the Bible once a month. You'll be happy to know that at Freedom House, 77% of you say you read the Bible either weekly or a few times a month. So that's really good. Give yourself a hand. That's all right. Last week we learned from the uh, survey that 14% of people in the uh, people believe the Bible is relevant for today. 14% of the people took the survey in Canada. Only 14% of the Bible says the Bible is even relevant for today. Again, 67% say they believe in God, but 14 say 14% say, yeah, I think the Bible has something to say. You'll be happy to hear that 95% of you. Believe that the Bible has something relevant to say. I need to pray for the other 5%, but I'm okay with that. I'm glad you did. 69% of Canadians and 52% of Christians believe that the Bible has irreconcilable differences. Or they, the Bible has things in it that don't just go together. So the Bible is wrong because it contradicts itself. So, 60, so almost all the Canadians... 67% say they, the Bible has, and so do 52% of Christian Canadians. We have a challenge in this one, Freedom House, because almost half of you believe that the Bible has irreconcilable contradictions. That's a problem, Jesse. You're right. That is a problem. 
So I thought I'd help you with this. Say thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to help you with this. All summer we're going to help you understand that the Bible really is the Word of God. It really is, is inspired by God, like it says in 2 Timothy 3.16, that all Scripture is breathed of God, and it's profitable for you, all of it. So I'm going to prove that to you, and I'm going to use this, this, uh, this summer, I'm going to use an old creed called the Apostles' Creed. Oh, that's very funny. The Apostles' Creed. Anybody ever heard of the Apostles' Creed? Anybody come from a background, a Christian background that used to use this regularly? Anybody? Yeah, yeah. Good. Actually, a number of different uh, faith groups, so Christians, use this. This creed was written in 390 AD. Many scholars would say that a lot of the things that come out of the Apostles' Creed actually were written by the Apostles in the first century, but in 390 they put it down on paper. And so I'm just going to read this for you. I believe in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth. You bring with me? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Savior, who was conceived of the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary. Anybody sit with me? Yeah. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He ascended into hell, and the third day rose again from the dead. Anybody sit with me? Woo. Can I get an amen? amen. Woo the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He sits on the right hand of God, the Father, from the heavens. You don't get to say hence a lot, so when you get a chance, you should. From hence, he shall come to judge the quick, the living, and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. Yes. You know how we know the Holy Ghost is alive? Because he worked through Rebecca on Friday. And he worked through the worship team this morning. And he was speaking to you during worship. Woo! Woo we believe in the Holy Ghost. We believe in the Holy Catholic Church. <laughs> It's right there in the creed. It doesn't mean the Catholic Church necessarily, it, but if you're from the Catholic Church, God bless you. What it means there in the creed, it means the universal church. We believe that there's one church. We'll talk about that in a few weeks. We believe in the community of the saints, forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. 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 Now, it's a lovely creed. But it's old. Some of you, when I mentioned we were going to do the Apostles' Creed, some of you, I lost it. You, you lost like, what? The Apostles' Uba? So, I was thinking this week, if there was only a way that we could teach the Apostles' Creed from 390 AD, but bring it up to modern day. If only there was a way.
Dream House. <laughs> So he wants to rock you. Yeah. So we're going to learn theology. And here's the first thing we start. And so when Dwayne, when you went off on the song uh, today about God being our refuge and our strength, we get all of these ideas from the Bible. <laughs> I'm getting way too old for this. I don't know how Mick still does this. I mean, Eddie died. Sorry, never mind. Freddie died over this whole thing. Okay. It wasn't so much the singing that killed him, though. Okay, so. <laughs> Jehovah, God reveals himself in the Bible. And so in a few minutes, I'm going to prove to you why you can believe the Bible. Over, over almost any other, in fact, over any other ancient manuscript, you should believe the Bible. A lot of old uh, writings that you believe and take for granted have tons less evidence for them than the Bible does. So we'll get there in a minute. But when we talk about theology, we're talking about the study of God, loving God. And God reveals himself in the Bible as Jehovah Jireh, our provider. How many of you know God to be Jehovah Jireh? Yeah. He reveals himself as being uh, Jehovah Nisi, our banner. See that on the left-hand side? He's our banner. He's, he's our refuge. He reveals himself as Jehovah Shalom, our peace. He reveals himself as Jehovah Rohi, our shepherd. You see that there? Yeah. This is how God, through the ages, revealed himself characters in the Bible, he revealed his character to them. So today in 2014, when we sing, God our refuge, God our strength, we're declaring what people proved for thousands of years. So when we sing that and connect it to amazing grace, when Jesus died on the cross and rose again, he provided peace for us. It should be louder in here right now. <laughs> Jesus provided peace for us. Jesus provided healing for us. Jesus provided uh, uh, a shepherd, a father figure for us. That's what Jesus provided. We've got it all. Yeah. That's what theology teaches you. Now, if you didn't know theology, if you didn't know your Bible, you wouldn't know any of that, and you'd be very, very sad. So that's why you need to know the Bible. The Bible teaches that there's only one God. The Bible teaches that he's three in one. His Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches that God is omniscient. That means he knows everything. The Bible teaches that he's omnipotent. That means he's all-powerful. The Bible teaches that he's omnipresent. That he's everywhere at the same time. Now stop and think about those things. God knows everything. He's everywhere at the same time. And he's all-powerful. Shouldn't that make us feel pretty good if he's our God? He knows everything. Before you get to your future that you're freaked out about, God's there. Before you get to the future that you're freaked out about, God's there. And he knows how to prepare you right now how to get there. So you should take him up on his offer. Wouldn't you think? That's an important thing to understand. God is holy. God is just. God is love. See, that's a cool thing about God, if we know theology, that God is both loving and just. Some people in church want to make God all loving. It doesn't matter what you do. God's loving. Everyone's going to make it to heaven. Some people are really caught up in his justice. God just can't wait to beat you up with a big stick. I like the fact that God's both. A God that knows everything about me hasn't killed me yet. Aren't you happy for that? Like, if I was God, I would have killed most of you already. No, honestly, like, no, I would have killed myself. Like, if I was God, I would go, I can't do this, but I wouldn't be doing it then. You understand, Roxanne, what I'm saying, don't you? Good, because I don't. What I'm saying is... He's awesome. He's amazing. The fact, that we, the fact that we get to love God is so amazing. It's so amazing. He's a creator of everything. We believe in God the Father, maker of the heaven and earth. He created everything. He spoke, and the worlds were there. No, stop and think about that for a minute. God spoke, and the worlds were there. Do you think he can handle your mortgage payment? God spoke, and stars were there, and then he called them by name. Do you think he can handle whether you need a job in the future? God spoke, and the planets aligned, and they don't crash into each other. Do you think he can help you raise your children? See, theology is so important. It gives us great perspective on how we live. And we believe in God the Father, maker of the universe, and he made it by the power of his word. He made it by the, 
He spoke it, and it happened. I'm also glad that God never changes. <clears throat> He's always the same. So when you go to God today, you know He hasn't changed His He's not like a fickle teenage. You know, remember when you're teenagers and like your girlfriend or boyfriend were just like, I don't know what I'm going to say today to you. <laughs> I, I, I liked you yesterday, but today. I'm so glad that God is not fickle like that. <laughs> Some people actually never got out of the teenage stage. I'm so glad God's not like that. He sees the best in us every time. He sees us through Jesus. You know, some Christians are always bringing up their past. Oh, I can't serve God because of this, 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 this. And I asked them, I said, have you asked God to forgive you for that? Well, yes, I have. Do you know what happens when we ask God to forgive us of those things? Do you know what happens? What happens? He forgives us. He forgives us, and then what? He forgets. I'm recommending you don't remind him. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he throws our sins like in Psalm 103 from the, as far as the east is from the west. I don't know how he does that, but shh, it's important to know that. You can walk in security if you know that God forgets what you've done so you can walk in freedom. Yeah. That's really important. Yeah. That's what theology will do for you. Let me take this a little deeper. Not only is it important to know what you believe and why you believe it, it's important because those who don't believe what you believe are getting louder and angrier. They're getting louder and angrier. But I want to tell you about a few guys that have come from being loud and angry atheists to turning to God. So I've intentionally not, these, the next five, six people I'm going to tell you about today, I've intentionally picked them because these are people that set up to disprove God. It was, it was their, it was their, they felt like it was maybe their calling. They, I'm going to disprove that God is true. I'm going to disprove the Bible. And while setting out to do it, they found that it was true and turned their lives over to Jesus. This guy here, his name is Josh McDowell. Anybody heard of Josh McDowell? When I first got saved, one of the first books I read actually was from Josh McDowell. The book was called Don't Check Your Brains at the Door. I loved it. It's a great book. It's still a great book. He's written books like uh, Evidence to, That Demands a Verdict. So in the, when he was in college, was he, when he was in university, he set out to disprove God. It was one of his goals in university to disprove God, to discredit God. In the process of doing that, he found out that what he was trying to disprove was actually true. And so still today, he goes to colleges and universities and tells students what he found out like 40 years ago. That's pretty awesome. This guy here, his name is Lee Strobel. Anybody ever heard of Lee Strobel? He's written a bunch of books on apologetics. It means defending your faith. He's wrote a, written a bunch of them. He set out to disprove God. He had a legal background. He had a journalistic background. He set out to disprove God. He was the, let me make sure I get this correct. I think he was the legal analyst for the Chicago, Chicago Tribune. Yep, right there. That's what he was. He called himself a skeptic. His friends called him an angry atheist. And he set out as a journalist and as a, a legal mind to set out to let people know that, that God was wrong. And while doing it, Follow the bouncing ball. Guess what happened? He, he came to prove, in fact, that God was true. It's pretty awesome. And he, he's got some great writing out there. If you want to, you know, love God with your mind, I recommend some books by Lee Strobel. This guy here is awesome. His name is Andre Cole. Andre Cole is probably the most famous magician you've never heard about. Yeah. <laughs> he has created... Over a thousand illusions that are used worldwide. He is the most traveled <laughs> illusionist. He found out at a, at, a, at a young age, he found out that he had a gift and he started going into illusion. He started going into magic. And he got so deeply into it, he thought, I'm going to start my own church. He was going to start his own religion, he said. And in setting out to do that, he said, but before I do that, I have to disprove that Jesus is true. And because as a magician, he said, I bet I could do all of Jesus' uh, magic 
He, it was only magic. Jesus only walked by magic. And I'm going to disprove everything he did. In the process, I see this is kind of like a, now you know the end of the story kind of thing. In the process of disproving Jesus, saying that all his miracles are magic, he found out that in fact they were true. <clears throat> and now he still travels the world doing magic. He calls it illusion. He said, there's no, there's no magic. This is that, the one picture down the right, that's him walking on water. He created a great illusion of how he walked on water. He said, I tried one time, I can't walk on water. <laughs> but he created a great illusion of how he did it. How many were, uh, remember when David Copperfield made the Statue of Liberty disappear? Remember that? That was Andre Cole. He, he was the background of all, how that all happened. So he is, he is probably the most well-known magician you don't know about. Because he sets up everyone else. And they go. Now he travels. He's probably traveled to more uh, countries as, a, as a, an illusionist than anyone else. And now he travels around telling people of Jesus and how his miracles are true. In fact, he says it this way. This is how he defines it. He goes, he goes I've got a team of about 30, 40 people. Most of them know how I do my illusions. Most of them are sworn to secrecy. He says, however... If it got to the place where they were threatened by death to have to give up my illusions, he says, I know for a fact they'd all give it up. He says, that's another reason why I know Jesus was not a, just a magician doing things he says. Because 12 people, well, 11, 11 people went to death, their death, because they wouldn't give up the Son of God. This guy here, I like, actually, Steve Strauss introduced me to this guy. His name is Jane, Jane, uh, sorry, J. Warner Wallace. He has a website and a Facebook page, which you should check out. It's awesome. You should follow him on Facebook. It's called uh, Cold, Case, um, Cold Case Christianity. You should check him out. Uh, Warner was a crime scene investigator who set out to disprove Christianity. See the theme going on here? He set out to disprove Christianity. He was also an angry atheist. He was also a skeptic. Here's what he says now. I want to interest the disinterested. I want to challenge those who don't yet recognize the challenge and engage those who feel disengaged. If we hope to change the direction of the church and grow a movement of thoughtful, intellectual, robust Christian ambassadors, we're going to need to reach those who are disinterested. And that's what he does. So he took all that he learned as a detective, as a cold case homicide detective. You know what that means? It means a cold case homicide detective is someone that they get, uh, they'd already given up on the case. That's why it's called a cold case. And he'll go and solve them using evidence that other people didn't see. And again, he tried to use that same type of evidence to disprove who Jesus was and instead in the process found out that Jesus was in fact who he said he was. <clears throat> Let me show you this. This is fantastic. This guy here, anybody recognize him? Probably not. You probably, even up to today, you probably want His name is Francis Collins. Francis Collins is famous for being the one that, that led the Human Genome Project. Francis Collins is a scientist that is at the top of his field. The Human Genome Project took the, the human gene and they decoded it. So now, I watched one of the videos I watched of his. He said, now probably within, within a few years, you'll be able to pay $1,000 and get them to read your gene, genes. So you'll know what your life is proposed, where you're going in your life. So if you're predisposed to cancer, they can help you now. If you're predisposed to diabetes, if you're predisposed to these genetic uh, disorders, they can find out now and it wouldn't be just like, it's not all lump sum uh, um, medication anymore. It's very, very unique to who you are. And he was the guy. He was the guy that led the Human Genome Project. He was raised, not as an atheist, he was raised agnostic. His parents actually were very artistic, which is interesting. If you watch videos of Francis Collins, which I encourage you to do, his parents were very artsy. His mom was a playwright. His dad was an art teacher. And they, didn't, they weren't uh, antagonistic against the church. They just had no time for it. They were doing the artsy kind of stuff. And so he felt called into, uh, into medicine. He went to college. He went to university, rather. 
And when he got there, he actually went from agnostic to atheist, and he became an angry atheist. He became the guy that wanted to disprove God. And in the process of going from very uh, wide range of, of medical science into becoming a doctor and dealing with death, he said, he came to the conclusion that there has to be a God because of the, how he had watched some people die. Interesting. He makes a great argument for God by morality. If you're looking for a great argument, this guy's amazing. And he's respected. He's one of the most respected scientists in the world. See, because what the angry atheists tell you is that Christians are dumb. There's no smart Christians. You'd have to be dumb to believe that. I want you to know there's many, many brilliant, brilliant minds that are Christians. Many brilliant people, again, who tried to disprove God, some of them. There's lots who just were raised in the church and stayed there as well. But many, and I intentionally chose some of these guys here because they weren't the ones that you went, oh yeah, but he, he was raised in that, or she was raised in that. No, these guys, these guys went hard after disproving Jesus, disproving the Bible. And they came to realize after all their medical science and all of their fact-finding missions and all the stuff they did, archaeology, all the things they did, they said, no, this has to be true. God has to exist. The Bible has to be his word. Look at this. This is fantastic. This comes out of uh, Josh McDowell books. You can see it down there in 1979, Evidence and Demands a Verdict. He's actually rewritten that book or brought different editions out afterwards. But look, at this is, this is a, a page of old manuscripts that have been found. So how many, raise your, no, stop looking, look at me for a minute. How many believe in Caesar? Julius Caesar lived. <coughs> believe in Julius Caesar? Good. How many believe in Plato in his writings? How many believe in Homer? See, Look at, like, not Simpson. <laughs> Caesar, information about Caesar was written about 100 to 140 or 44 BC. The earliest fragment that was found about Caesar was found a thousand years later in 980. And we have 10 of them. But nobody doubts that Caesar existed. Plato was 427 to 347 BC. Uh, the Earliest fragment of anything about Plato was found in 900. That was 1,200 years later. We have seven fragments about Plato, and no one doubts. No one's out there campaigning that Plato never existed. You can see all the rest if you want this, I'll send it to you. But, but look down to the New Testament. It was written in AD 40 to 100. Earliest fragments that were found in AD 125, actually they found fragments now that go into the first century, which is really, really important, because atheists will tell you, well, 125, that was enough time to make up a myth about Jesus. Well, we found fragments now from the first century, and that's not enough time to create a myth. A few, a few years is not enough time to create a myth. Earliest fragment was found before 100 AD. The time span is 25 years, maybe 10 years. Maybe. There's 24,000 documents. By far, by far, the evidence for the Bible and what was said in the life of Jesus, by far. No other manuscript, no other ancient manuscript comes even close to the evidence that we have for the Bible. But still, people try to disprove it. Maybe that also proves that it's powerful. Maybe the fact that people are trying to disprove it when there's so much proof for it, maybe it also sets up the good and evil conflict. Maybe. Wouldn't you think? We believe in God the Father, maker of the heaven and earth. I want you to know that belief in God and belief in the Bible at best, are provable. I think you can make the statement and say, it's provable. At best, it's provable. At 